Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. This problem was suggested by one of my subscribers, Dan Ka. I hope I did not mispronounce your name. Please let me know if I did. We're going to be evaluating x plus y over z plus x plus z over y plus y plus z over x when x y plus x z plus y z is given as zero. Uh, we also obviously need an additional condition here, uh, which is x, y, z as a product should not equal zero. Great, so I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to make a common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be x, y, z. So let's go ahead and multiply x plus y by x, y. x plus z by x, z and y plus z by yz. And all of that is going to be divided by xyz. Great. So now we're going to distribute everything and then uh, we're going to arrange the terms. So the idea is to factor this expression, but I'm going to need to add some additional terms to make it factorable. All right. So from here we get x squared y plus y squared x x squared z plus z squared x plus y squared z plus z squared y. And then all of that is going to be divided by x, y, z. Now, my focus is uh, putting the terms with um, x squared together first. So, and then I'm going to be adding something else to it to make it factorable, but at the same time I also want to take advantage of this given equation. We know that that sum is always equal to zero, so we're going to be able to use that. Okay, so now I'm going to put together x squared y and x squared z, and to that I would like to add x, y, z. And you'll see in a little bit why uh, I'm picking this term. And then y squared x plus y squared z, and I'd like to add another x, y, z to it. And then we have z squared x plus z squared y. And of course, I want to add x, y, z one more time. But I added the x, y, z three times. Notice that. So I want to subtract x, y, z once. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and uh, divide all of this by x, y, z. And here's the goal. I want to factor this by grouping. So it would make sense if we group them like this. And of course, negative 3xyz is going to be left outside, and we're going to take care of that later. So if you consider the first group, you notice that x is a common factor, so we can write this as x times xy plus xz plus yz. And then the second group, we're going to take out a y, and that's going to be yx plus yz plus xz. And then finally, z is going to give us zx plus zy plus xy minus 3xyz. Obviously, xy plus xz plus yz is the same thing as yx plus yz plus xz, which is the same thing as zx plus zy, zy plus z, uh, xy. So they're all the same, it's just written differently. So now we can go ahead and we basically can proceed in two different ways here. Um, since xy plus xz plus yz is equal to zero, uh, we can kind of set it equal to zero, but I'm going to do the following. So you can see the, the whole pattern here. Uh, I'm going to take xy plus xz plus yz out. That's a common factor. And that will be multiplied by x plus y plus z. This also gives you an identity for these kinds of expressions. So the numerator basically, which is something we started off with, right? We started off with this. Now it can be written as this, which is kind of nice because it gives you a way to factor it. And then this is going to be divided by x, y, z. Awesome. Now notice that x, y plus x, z plus y, z is equal to zero. Therefore, this term is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with negative 3 x, y, z divided by x, y, z. And the x, y, z cancels out and we're left with negative 3. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. So we got negative 3 using the first method. And let's see if we can get the same answer and pretend you don't know the first method. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm going to start with the common denominator. So let me go ahead and rewrite that. 
we had x plus y, x, y, plus x plus z, x, z, plus y plus z, y, z. And all of that is divided by x, y, z. Now here, I want to do something different. With the first method, we distributed everything, and then we you know, kept adding x, y, z to make it factorable, and then we subtracted it, so on and so forth. With the second method, uh, my approach will be slightly different, even though it arrives at the same thing. I'm going to set something uh, like x plus y plus z. Let's say we set it equal to s. s stands for sum here. So now this gives us three different things. x plus y can be written as s minus z. x plus z can be written as s minus y. And y plus z can be written as s minus x. And I'm going to be using all three here. This one, this one, and that one. Okay, let's go ahead and make the substitutions. We're going to get xy multiplied by s minus z. And then we get xz times s minus y. And then yz times s minus x. And all of that is divided by xyz. Now, we're going to go ahead and um, distribute this again, but this time it's a little easier. And we're getting co co common terms, or what is that called? We get a common factor. All right. So we get x, y, s, and then I want to put those together, x, z, s, and y, z, s. And then the other ones are just going to be x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z, but they're all negative. So it's just like subtracting it three times. That's where actually we got the negative 3 x, y, z from uh, with the first method. All right. So let's go ahead and divide this by x, y, z. Now, here's what I'd like to do, and this is the most fun part. Uh, we're going to take out an s here, so we're going to factor out s, and that gives us xy plus xz plus yz. And then from this, I'm going to subtract 3xyz, and then divide this by xyz. And now notice that xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 0, because that's given. So we get rid of this term again, and we get negative 3xyz divided by xyz, which is equal to negative 3. Of course, I have to emphasize one more time that x, y, z does not equal zero in this case. Great. So we're pretty much done with this, but I just wanted to tell you kind of like a different, um, not an approach, but, you know, sometimes you can use the following method. Uh, so an alternative, basically. So since we're given this, why don't we take advantage of this, right? We can use some numerical values. And obviously, our expression turns out to be a constant, so... I can do the following. Suppose x equals y equals 1 half. This implies, well, actually, I don't know why I picked 1 half. I, I, was, <laughs> I wanted to pick 1 first, but anyways. So from here, we get 1 plus z plus uh, z equals 0, which means z is equal to negative 1 half. So if you go ahead and plug these values into the original expression, you also get the same value, negative 3, as the result. So basically, the answer is always a constant, regardless of the x, y, z values you pick. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Bye-bye.